Hi there guys, I'm here with this amazing Dingwall bass and it's incredible to play and the mastermind behind Sheldon is here and um, just to start out, you know, can you talk a little bit about your background? Sure, well, uh, my background is mainly music. Uh, I started playing when I was four, um, playing baritone ukulele, then piano, um, and then drums, and then guitar. Uh, bass didn't come along until I was 16. Um, but most of my life, since I was 15 years old, has I've made my living either teaching music, playing music, or building instruments. And uh, essentially, it's all the same thing. It's, it's, it's a creative process. Um, bass builders share the same struggles that musicians share, that actors share, that artists share. Um, and uh, you're saying you don't have any money? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. It's, don't have any money, but there. It, it took me a long time in life to figure out that there were two currencies. There's there's the currency that you you put in the bank and it feeds your stomach, and then there's the currency that artists prefer that feeds the soul, feeds the heart, and and so. It's been a very fulfilling career in, in terms of that currency. Um, and, and, you know, the money, it, 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 it has been a long time coming. And, yeah. and I'll, I'm still catching up to the rest of my friends that went out and got straight jobs. But, but uh, no regrets. Oh, yeah. I guess you, you know, like the rest of us, you know, we have friendship all over the world and have the same passion. and Absolutely amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So when did you start building? Uh, I built, I started building um, uh, guitar bridges actually. I couldn't afford a Floyd Rose and I'd never seen pictures that were larger than this. So I had to design my own locking uh, tremolo system for my own guitar. Uh, and I got the bug. Once I did that, it was, it was game over. And then I had to, I had to build my own neck because I had ideas for asymmetrical carves and things like that. Uh, so this was all when I was uh, 19, 20 years old. And uh, I had no tools, so I had to borrow tools. And um, as a business, um, 1987 or eight was when was when I got off the road and I started um, um, experimenting with prototypes. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, as you guys could see, there's a lot of things happening. This is not a straight jazz space going on. Um, so. When did you start introducing uh, fan frets? Um, that was really interesting because uh, at the time I was building guitars and every time I'd sell a guitar, I'd get a call from a bass player saying, can you build a five string bass? It was always five string basses. And, um, and knowing nothing about basses, I'm, I'm still a visitor to the bass world um, and, and feel very honored that I've been allowed to to uh, be involved in the bass world. Um, but uh, knowing nothing about basses, I had to ask, um, what is it you were looking for? And the consistent um, quest was for a better B string. Yeah. So, um, uh, like I said, I, I had experience with piano since I was four or five years old. And, and to me, the most interesting notes on a piano were the low ones. They were the richest. They had the harmonics that just sort of surrounded you um, in a three-dimensional way. And, and so the first question I had was, well, why can't you get a good B string on a bass? Um, and you can on a piano. So I went to piano designers and, and talked to them about strings and, and realized right off the bat, it's, it's all about scale length. Yeah. Um, they've been building pianos for how many hundred years and, and uh, they've got it all figured out. So look to them first for a solution. And, and if it's scale length, then it's, it's scale length. Um, but that became a problem because nobody wants to play a bass this, this long. <laughs> so, so the solution came to a dead stop uh, right there. Um, well, I, I don't want to waste my time building a, a bass that's unplayable, so yeah. it can't be done. And then within a few months, I opened up a guitar player magazine and saw a Novak's fan fret guitar. And uh, it, it, I believe it was built by my hero, Steve Klein. Mm -hmm. So uh, right then it was just an instant um, justification that this was a viable technology and it was just a re eureka moment. That's how you build a bass 
with the scale inch where it needs to be without screwing everything else up. Mm. So you can still have natural, um, uh, traditional scale length on the G-string where you don't want it any longer. Oh, so that's like totally normal? 34 inch. Yeah. yeah. And so that, it sounds like a, a, a standard bass like we're all familiar with. Yeah. And by extending the bass strings, you get them to sound more like the G string. So yeah. the, the B sounds uh, has the punch and the articulation of the E and the A string. Yeah, I, I can just play a little bit so you can hear. Without even getting uh, getting flappy or just no. like really punchy. And you, you were just talking because what I'm feeling here is that this could go on way down. And you, you, you just told me that there was one uh, base that was built for E. For animals as leaders, yeah. and, and it's tuned to uh, E0. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> right, about, right about 20 hertz. Which a lot of people will say, well, you can't even hear 20 hertz. And I agree, you can't. No. 20 hertz, pure 20 hertz is very hard to hear. Yeah. You see the movement of, of the cone go. Exactly. Yeah. But um, uh, people place a lot of emphasis on the fundamental, but that's really only a, a minor portion of what you're hearing in a bass string. Yeah. You're hearing a combination of the fundamental, the first harmonic, the second yeah. harmonic, yeah. primarily, and then the harmonics above that if, if you've got a bright tone. Mm -hmm. um, but where we're distinguishing pitch and 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 what our ear is most sensitive to are, are those upper harmonics. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's 20 hertz fundamental, but the the first harmonic is 40 hertz, and and the third harmonic, sorry, second harmonic is 80. Mm -hmm. So you're really hearing a lot of that bass note, and that 20 hertz fundamental is providing the whoosh, mm -hmm. and so you're feeling 20. <clears throat> And you're you're interpreting, uh, or you're hearing the uh, 40 and the 80, yeah. and you're interpreting 20, and it is a really cool Mad, experience. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I bet. <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense that you could actually produce a note that that would be usable, but it's very usable. So uh, you also, oh, you just released this one. I just want to uh, bring it into the table because we're still talking about fat thread. So this is the new six string and it's just so gorgeous but you also had a point with the c string it's not only going down but it's also going up the down that is yeah you know if you take a look at at the harp family of instruments harps pianos harpsichords they all have uh, longer bass strings and shorter treble strings and there's a reason for that and that is because they're acoustic instruments that have a, a wide range of of uh, of notes and so you can't electronically fix um, the trebles that are, that are too bright to damp them down and you can't fix bass strings that are too dull and, and brighten them up. So they use physics. So longer bass strings automatically sound brighter. Mm -hmm. Shorter treble strings damp down the trebles and fatten up the tone of the, of the treble strings. And so as much of an improvement as there is on the B string, and, and we're known as, as sort of a brand that that's all about the B string. Yeah. But as, as much of an improvement as, as going longer on the B is, going shorter on the C string really fattens it up. It, it sounds like a bass instead of a baritone guitar. Yeah, uh, I, I guess we should just do an example, just, just really quick so you guys can hear it. It's, it's pretty amazing. And the, and the feel of the C, it, it, it's a thin string, but it doesn't feel like it's cutting your fingers. It, it feels supple, you can bend it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's 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 the same voice. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, and that's it. not <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I hope you can hear where uh, trying to. Yeah, but hey, and this this is the new baby. Yes. Um, this is the the prototype for the NG2 and combustion six string. Um, yeah. This one will be going to Adam Nolly Get Good after the show. No, it's mine. <laughs> And, and he'll just confirm that, um, that, that it 
it's up to his standards that it that it fits in the mix like we want it to and yeah. and any any problems he'll he'll let us know and we'll we'll make adjustments um and we were just talking you know with or who's in the room somewhere hey or <laughs> but <coughs> it, it feels lighter even lighter than 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 the five string which is like amazing and i'm not a five a six string player but this is actually pretty easy to just you know it's very playable and and the tone of it is like really super nice so you you always you know for me you know you seems like a guy that puts the envelope of, of, of the instrument and basically what everything you do is kind of like reaching out so so now you have done this what what what's you know, next what is your dream base Well, you know, the the D bird was it's it's probably been the the bass I've worked on the longest and yeah. the, and the hardest. And uh, <clears throat> for instance, uh, this bass. I mean, a lot of work I, I took from previous instruments. So it's an afterburner neck. Yeah. Uh, tweak the headstock. Uh, it started with the four and five string body. Tweak that. Um, and so this was a very quick process. Mm -hmm. A week, roughly. Wow. Okay. Um, And, and, but the D-Bird four string was between five and seven years. And, um, and, and you know, I have zero training as in art or engineering. Everything I've had, I've learned, or three-dimensional CAD, uh, I've, I've self-taught and everything like that. So a lot of the times uh, design is quite a struggle for me. And so simply moving a line by ten thousandths of an inch I would maybe spend an hour doing that, going back and forth ten thousands okay. at a time. Um, so the process can be very long, and take it as far as you can until you run out of ideas and you just get frustrated and and, um, and can't go any further, and then leave it, and then let your brain fill up with more ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so the D bird for me is is I think the most exciting because uh, it, it was such a challenge mm -hmm. because it's such an iconic design it's been based on yeah. and yet um, uh, the effort was to not just make a, a, a better copy of the original it was to reimagine the original from a completely different perspective yeah, yeah. and, and um, by the way it looks amazing oh thank you <laughs> um, the, res the response on that has been phenomenal so mm -hmm. the next challenge is uh, to do a five string and I'll be honest with you I, uh, I, I personally don't know I can pull it off um, but I'm going to try And I, I know I'll, I'll succeed, but at this point, I still have. I'm filled with self doubt about the ability to um, make a five string happen. Yeah, yeah, cool. Oh, I have a question. I, I saw an uh, interview with you and at least Klein. You, you talked about banjo frets. Yes. So, you, are you using that on all the the models? The least Klar, we use mandolin size frets, oh, yeah. and on everything else, we use banjo frets. Yeah. So what is like the argumentation for doing the mandolin frets? It's really interesting. That was that was completely from Lee, yeah. and um, and and as Lee tells it, uh, he was going into uh, John Carruthers' shop. Um, he's a, a luthier in in uh, Los Angeles area, originally from Canada, yeah. um, and he was getting a refret on his bass. And and uh, Lee looks up at the wall and he sees some mandolin fret wire there, and he goes. What's that all about? John said, well, that's for mandolins. And Lee being Lee, um, he likes to do things his way. Yeah. Hey, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the best part of him is, is that uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't give a, a hoot about what anybody says. He just, he just does what he wants to do. And, yeah. and uh, that's, that's such a cool part of his personality. Um, he said, I want to try him. And John, you know, argued on it and said, uh, I don't think he'd like it. He says, no, I'd like to try it. And so at the time, uh, when I shipped him his first bass, it had huge frets on it because coming from the guitar world, huge frets were, were in fashion and they made a lot of sense. And basses being bigger than guitars, bigger frets just made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so Lee got the bass and he loved it. And he said, the one thing I forgot to ask was for mandolin frets. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what's what's he getting at here? So I built him a new bass, and this was a long time ago. This was maybe 20 years ago, and I still remember like it was yesterday, 
trying the bass for the first time and going, this is revolutionary. Mm. It's the neck felt, it's the same profile neck. Same, everything was the same, just the frets were smaller and it made the, the neck feel twice as easy to play. It made it feel thinner. Um, when you slide up the neck, it's not clack, 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 clack. It's you just hear the notes. So less metal equals more wood in, in terms of tone. And uh, so from that point on, the nice thing about being a small business is there was nobody else I had to consult except myself. So it was, okay, today we're changing our frets. And, and that afternoon, the frets that went in were small and we never looked back. That is such a cool story. Um, thank you for coming. It's been a really big pleasure. It's um, a, a big learning process as well. It's been my honor. Uh, goodbye out there and I hope you Check out this new base. Awesome. This new base. Woo! Or all <laughs> steel. All space. You can do that as <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>